Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, the clifftop was bleak, deserted, and windswept, although it was a sunny day. The Carmaddock Research Establishment rested in a small valley. It was well protected by high walls and barbed wire and surrounded by clumps of undergrowth. From this undergrowth, there stumbled a tall, spare, bespectacled young man. He appeared to be almost exhausted. He stumbled and stopped. He took his spectacles off to wipe them. The sunlight flashed onto them. The flare of light reflected into his eyes, and a voice said, Guthrie! Guthrie! Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Guthrie? Guthrie wheeled round. There was no one there. No one at all. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Beale, The Avengers. Episode one of this story, in which John Steed is taken off the case and Emma Peel is put onto one that could be all done by mirror. <laughs> Guthrie, the young man on the cliff top, stood gazing about him in sheer terror. The wind whipped at his clothing, tore into his mind. Beneath his feet, the earth seemed to tremble. Out at sea, the waves crashed in white fury against the base of the lighthouse. Guthrie dragged his wits together and started to run towards the buildings of the Carmaddock Research Establishment. But once more, he stumbled. His spectacles fell to the ground. He stooped to retrieve them. The sunlight flashed on them, blinding him, and the voice said, Guthrie, Guthrie. Stop, stop, Guthrie. Guthrie. Get on Get your, your feet. feet. You hear me? I... I... Get on your feet. Don't turn around. You hear me? Yes. Get your hands high. Higher. Come on, way above your head. I can't. Come along now. Keep facing front. I'm right behind you, Guthrie. Back up to me. Come on now. Nice and slow. That's it. That's it. More. 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 Nice and slow. Come on. That's it. Back up. Guthrie lost his footing. He couldn't see behind him what was below. He fell from the cliff with a hideous cry to his death on the rocks below. He left behind him echoing laughter. <laughs> At that moment, quite some miles away, John Steed was enjoying the sunshine near a swimming pool. In the pool, floating on a large, inflated rubber armchair, was Mother. He was in a bathing costume, smoking one of his expensive cigars, sipping a gin and tonic, with his red telephone on a small cushion floating alongside. Mother was relaxing. Mother. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Hard at it as usual. Can't afford to sit back and relax, you know. Huh? Oh. Oh, no, no. No, I don't think so. Steve? No, it's impossible. At the moment, he's under close arrest. 
I must say, Mother, I think putting me under close arrest and the thick. I couldn't agree more, Steed. But you must appreciate my position. Your position looks reasonably relaxed to me. Uh, quite. But I have responsibilities. The secrets have been leaking from the Carmatic Research Establishment, and you have spent a great deal of time there recently. But that was at your request. Uh, you and I know that, but the people at the establishment don't. So what's more natural that they should vent their spleen and suspicion on the only stranger in their midst? Me. Uh, you. I still think it's rather rough. Yes, maybe. But I've had to act with uh, all haste and due caution. <laughs> they like phrases like that. What have you told them? Not much. Just that you are being held pending a full inquiry, which won't take place. Of course not. But think of all the memos, all the paperwork and saved. Meanwhile, well, you must admit that I've tried to make the circumstances of your arrest as congenial as possible. Well, would you like a drink, Mr. Steed? Gin and tonic? Oh, well, I suppose if you uh, enter. Thank you. Uh, is everything you need here? Look upon it as a sort of necessary holiday. Ooh. I uh, might just be forced into that. <laughs> You know, Mother, this isn't going to solve the problems at Carmeric. No, I agree. But I'm putting someone else onto it. Oh, may I ask who? <laughs> Very pretty. Lovely dive. Morning, Mrs. Field. Oh, good morning, Mother. Hello, Bestie. Morning. You're more than usually energetic this morning. I feel great. Ready for anything. Good. Glad you like the water. You're going to the seaside. Breath of air at Carmeric. Ah, I thought so. It suits me. When do we start? Uh, Steed will not be accompanying you. He's under arrest. What? Arrested? I'm innocent. I tell you, I'm, I'm innocent. And with all these girls about, you won't be for long. You'll find all the details you need in here. Mother picked up a file from the floating table and threw it onto the side of the pool. Mrs. Peel heaved herself out of the water. Mm. So I'm to handle this alone, am I? I didn't say that. I'll arrange for some support. Uh, now, where is that young man? Um, yeah, oh, there he is. Uh, what name? What name? <coughs> uh, you want it, please, yeah? What we want is what name? Uh, what name will be going with you, Mrs. Peel? It'll make a change uh, for both of you. <laughs> Won't it, Steve? And that's how it started. Steed watched Mrs. Peel and Watney leave the pool and eventually climb into Emma's car. He thought they made a strange partnership and wondered why Mother had arranged it. Somehow he couldn't see it working on a very sophisticated level. Mrs. Peel was of a very similar opinion. Have you worked with Mr. Steed for very long, Mrs. Peel? Sometimes it feels like a lifetime. We've had a lot of fun. I see. I didn't think having fun was the object of these exercises. It isn't, but it helps. I see. How much do you know about the Carmadag Research Establishment? Nothing at all. Don't you think you should have done a little homework? I'll let it come as a delightful surprise. I should have thought it would have been more to your credit if you were completely au fait with the complexities of the assignment. I read the file, if that makes you feel any better. Steve should have cleared it up all before this. Perhaps there wasn't very much to clear up. Well, must be. Mother must have had reasons for taking Steed off the case and putting me onto it. Yes. I admit that doesn't make much sense. Secrets have been leaking out. It's either an inside or an outside job. Oh, really? Yes. We've intercepted coded radio messages for the past few weeks, giving... Giving up to the minute reports on every detail of the work carried out at the Commodical Research Establishment. Yes, I know. As I've already said, I have read the file. Well, I think you'd better stick close to me, Mrs. Beale. And then, if there's any trouble... I'll be able to get you out of it. All right, Watney. I'll look after you. Don't worry. On that not very cooperative note, the conversation ended. At the Carmathic Research Station, Watney was very impressed by the security precautions. Having parked the car, they were both very carefully screened. Eventually, they were shown into an inner laboratory. And behind a large desk sat Major Sparshot, a tough, taciturn, humorless man. He also inspected their papers. Hmm. Peel, Emma. Hmm. Seems in order. Oh, I am. Watney, Watney, Watney. Extraordinary name. My parents happen to be rather fond of it. 
extraordinary. Well, I'm Sparshot, Major Sparshot. I'm in charge of security here. I suppose the two of you want to look around, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Well, for a start. Mm, yes? You could remember that we are on your side. <clears throat> yes, I suggest you follow me. As you can see, security is an extremely efficient peak, anti-bugging devices, hidden recorders, long-range mics. Nothing can stand up to this sort of stuff. You know what we're doing here, I suppose? Sonar power? Trying to harness the power of the sun? That is a simple way of putting it. But you see, it isn't all that simple. Uh, by the way, your visit here is... It's top secret. Nobody knows about it. Sparshot gave the young man a withering glance and led them into a further room in the center of which was a large revolving mirror. The room was surrounded by armed guards. Sparshot indicated them. There they are, you see. You can tell we don't take chances. Major Sparshot, there are only two alternatives. It's an inside or an outside. I personally screen everyone working in this establishment. Then let's leave that for the moment. What about outside? Yes, official procedure demands that we ask. Have there been any unusual occurrences? Uh, no, 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 it's ridiculous. It, it can't be any possible connection. Try it. Well, the other day, a local resident fell over the cliff head. What was his name? Guthrie, Walter Guthrie. Does he live near you? Well, the cottage about a mile away, Apple Tree Cottage in Farnham Lane, in lodgings there. I think I'll do a bit of checking up, right now. Uh, but I say, look here, Mrs. Oh, Steele. don't worry, what me, what me, what me. I won't get lost. But what about me? Much better if you stay here. After all, you are completely au fait with the complexities of the assignment. I'll see you. Sparshot permitted himself a faint smile. Perhaps you would like to check on the rest of security, Mr. Watney. This way, I should be most interested to have your opinion. Sparshot conducted Watney over the building, confident that the young man would find no faults in his security system. He would have been utterly shattered had he overheard a telephone conversation that was going on as Mrs. Peel drove her way along the cliff road. Hello? Hello? Sir? It's Mark in here, sir. It's the girl, sir. Mrs. Emma Peel. She's left the Carmodic Research Center. She's on her way to Guthrie's cottage right now. You think we should take action? Look in on what she's doing? All right. All right, leave it to you. Should be very interesting. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Speed and Emma Field, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.